I can easily say that Hades was the best game of 2020. Although not my favorite, this game has no weak points, nothing to really point negatively without being extremely picky. Supergiant Games knocked it out of the park, showed great experience and talent that can rarely be seen. Passion was just erupting, steaming from that game in every aspect of presentation, gameplay and story. Everything clicked perfectly, and this is something that can be rarely achieved, even by the best. Not many studios really had a chance to compete with this masterpiece. But how did I get to this point? What did this studio represent throughout this 11 year journey? Supergiant Games is known for the great art, fantastic music and uniquely told story, all with great quality. Their first debut was Bastion, a game that shocked gaming industry with exactly those traits. Because it was an indie game in 2011, self-funded, made by 7 people. They were working in a house belonging to developer's father, and their actual experience was from working on Command & Conquer 3, Tiberian Wars and Red Alert 3, something that was vastly different from Bastion. There wasn't a big plan of how the entire game would look like, then how did it work out the way it did. They admit that they are writing and creating ideas of how the game would look like, put it into the game and see if it would work. Some of what I'm saying suggests that we do everything like super deliberately. The truth is, we also just jam a bunch of stuff uh, into the build. In the early going of a project, sometimes at random, everybody is just doing their own thing, throw it all in, and we'll see what sticks. All of them are extremely talented people, so having this much creating freedom, completely trusted with their work and vision, allowed them to perform in the best way possible. And it worked. Maybe Minecraft showed the potential of independent games, but Bastion was a living evidence of what it could represent. Not only pixelated graphics, unpolished simulations that were mostly about possibilities, forever in early access but finished experiences that can be on par with the most popular games. The, the most important thing about Bastion, I think, is that it was like, it was designed above all to be complete for all the pieces to fit together. Um, and looking back on it, I think we, we did that quite well. Even Warner Bros. saw something in it and decided to publish it. They didn't ask for any changes or influence in the development. If this isn't a proof of something more than average, then I don't know what else you need. And it was bought by plenty. If Bastion wasn't a success, I don't think Transistor, Pyre or Hades would be the same games we see today and each of them is more than special. You can see it the new album of Rhythm songs from the games where the last tune is called Remember the Bastion. They will never forget what brought them here in the first place and will always show respect to their history. Each of their games is a piece of art and when it comes to presentation, there is no place for less than excellent. Supergiant Games got a golden opportunity and used it in the best way possible. Telling stories that they wanted to tell, creating games that they wanted to create. And I don't believe that they failed even once. This type of freedom and potential is something unique and beautiful. Now, after 10 years, let's see how the game looks now. Did it get old? Can you see elements of Bastion that can be seen in the next games of Supergiant? Is it still worth playing? <laughs> If there is one thing that for sure didn't get old, it's the art. It's detailed and colorful. You don't really feel like there are many reused assets because they did an amazing job with setting everything up to hide it. Most rooms seem unique, even with the same elements, and more repetitive parts of the game are fast and short, so they are hard to get used to. You walk between the streets, inspired by cities of Morocco, lush jungles or deadly swamps, and even more. Elements, walls, decorations, all done with care and polish. Everything works and is composited masterfully. 
bringing you into the world that hits you with tones of something similar, but at the same time foreign. You walk through the world of destroyed civilization, endangered ecosystems from fantasy world, and you feel it throughout every second playing this game. Something that I haven't really seen elsewhere is the world creation itself as you progress through the level. It is a type of guidance of where you should go, but also fantastically synergizes with the narration, as if the world builds itself with the story that the narrator is describing through the whole game. This thing is actually coming from the first draft of the game. At the beginning it was thought that the main gameplay feature should be rebuilding the world by player. Supergiant Games has a distinct style that can be recognized by the first look. For sure it was the first thing that interested players. Bastion was one of the first that went into more stylized games, but there was nothing like that when it came to the quality itself. Itself. The game speaks for itself, it's still beautiful, all thanks to the very talented art director that had all the creative freedom she needed. And I was given the creative opportunity, I thought it was the perfect chance for me to kind of integrate some of my own passion into their world that they were trying to put together too. I actually was given a lot of creative freedom right off the bat uh, with the initial work I did, even as a contractor. Um, they, I think, encouraged me actually to just kind of look at the prototype and, and see what I thought would work best based on my own instincts. The only thing that I have a problem with is animation. Except the kit, the game really lacks any. Most of the enemies use 3 or 4 frames through the whole game, and this is very, very visible. This isn't such a problem in case of monsters, mostly. But when you are fighting those ghost-like enemies, you can clearly see the frames. Also, more difficult variants of enemies are literally different color. Not even recoloring it, just overlapping a whole color over entire model, like some Instagram pics. Only one enemy was really appealing when it comes to the visual design. But it's not really a big problem, the environment makes up for it. Art is truly important, but for sure there is one thing that I always thought had a much bigger impact on the whole experience of Supergiant games, and that is soundtrack. The actual heart of the game that gives life to all of this. And I'm not saying this from the top of my head. Everything is so janky because like the art is scanned out of D&D books and I model the main character and he's just like swinging a hammer really stupidly. But Darren's music is like really awesome in the background because music can just sort of be done like at the very beginning it turns out. And that was like kind of something that ended up, you know, following us through all these projects where like the music is often the first expression of the tone and stuff that we end up using. Using the soundtrack not only as a way to narrate but also to become the foundation of the tone themes that would be connected to the entire campaign is a very risky move. Not everyone could pull this off, for sure not people from Capcom. But Darren is someone who was able to, creating something that is accurate for the story and also narrated with his own spin. This debut is something to talk about for centuries. Every song hits exactly how it should and I have to say, this game wouldn't be half as good without it. Emotional scenes wouldn't have worked the same way. <laughs> I don't really listen to music from video games. There are some exceptions, and every single game from Supergiant is a beautiful one. This man is an international treasure that should be protected by any means, and Bastion or Hades wouldn't be as meaningful as they are now without him. I believe that Bastion also started a new trend in gaming, something that now is overused by every single walking simulator. Bastion didn't have a big budget, and the developers wanted to focus primarily on the story. So, how can you bring enough narration? 
progression to the story that would follow you throughout the whole game and take care of the multiple characters that would need to have actors. Have a one single narrator that would always follow you and describe the whole plot. Of course Bastion wasn't the first one, but having a charismatic character that is always somewhere in the background was something rare. It wasn't as costly as having multiple actors and it still had a very good impact on the story. Listen, all this takes a lot of getting used to. And you do get used to it, after a while. There's three things I'll always miss though. One, not having to watch my step all the time. Two, uh, forget about two. Thanks to the narration, Bastion was also very entertaining to watch and experience, which led to the whole rise in popularity, and for sure inspired other games. Ruin has come to our family. He definitely brought this feeling of a story being told by an old man that has seen too much in the world, and all of it was recorded in a closet. Narrator was something that connected the art, the music, the gameplay into one intertwined, consistent experience. There is only one problem, he doesn't stop talking. It wasn't really a big problem back there, because the whole charismatic narrator aspect was something unique, but now in 2021 we have a bunch of games with a lot of actors, characters in the story, so it isn't a special thing, although it is still amazing, iconic narrator. There are more games with cinematic experience now, and the problem is that you are becoming really tired as he describes every single thing that is going on. I don't know if there was ever a 30 second break from his monologue. Because of that, you don't really have time to gather your thoughts or analyze what he told you. You are constantly interrupted by his talking, most of which are not really that important. So. Gameplay. In one word, I would call it boring. You run from map to map and kill things. This is really it. You don't really have any skills except one. Choosing among many before going out, but not even one is interesting on its own. If you could have many at the same time, mixing them could bring something good, but this is all. You can have up to two weapons from 11, none of them are really fun to use and the variation doesn't really matter. You choose two favorites and run with them for the rest of the game. Some are better at close or long distances, but you can counter attack just before getting attacked and it can kill almost everything in one shot. So, you already have best range weapon that has a very big window of responding. You can upgrade them, but those are only DPS up type upgrades. But what really makes it bad? Mostly because it's extremely unprecise. I couldn't properly feel the dodge button at any point of the game, something that wasn't a problem in Dark Souls. I don't even know if it had iframes that would make you immune to damage during few frames of the dodge animation. I couldn't really feel the flow of attacks from enemies because they lack animation and usually there is too many of them to keep track of. It still doesn't matter because your character is a walking tank and health potions are everywhere. Don't really feel like the character is doing exactly what you want. In many instances it isn't really a problem, but when you are playing with blunderbuss it can be tiresome. This is even more visible in the additional challenges that require precision. They are just not fun. Your character is mostly auto-locking on an enemy and even that is somehow unprecise. Design of enemies is not really interesting in terms of gameplay. When it comes to action games with many types of enemies, you need to focus on most dangerous ones first, while dodging attacks from others with using special weaponry and skills. Here it is just smashing attack button to kill everything. At the base you can use flasks to have special perks or make enemies more deadly using altar and get more money. But why would I make enemies more tiresome in a game where fighting isn't fun? But still the gameplay is somehow acceptable, just don't expect too much. But there is one thing that saves the gameplay for me, but I'll talk about it later. All of those things, soundtrack, art, gameplay, I'll contextualize and get much deeper by the story, by the narration. So now let's talk about it. It. Also spoiler zone from now on. If you get interested to play it and want to experience the story yourself, do it now. The less you know the better. Also leave a sub and like if you like what you see, if not leave a comment and tell me more. Okay, so the whole game happens in Sladonia, a beautiful lush fantasy country that is touched by the apocalypse called Calamity. It isn't really explained what happened, but almost everyone died. You play as the kid, one of the few survivors, and soon you find a bastion, a weird place slash device that has the power to save the world. But you need to find cores to power it up. 
This place belongs to Rooks, an old man that is actually the narrator. So you travel through the world and try to find the course, to repair what has been destroyed. Later you find Zulf, an ambassador from Ura, a country that Sardonia has been at war before, and now he has come here before the Calamity to fix the relations between them. You bring him to the Bastion and find more cores to stumble upon a singer, Zia, that is also from Ura, waiting at the pond with the only physical memory of her father. A journal written in the language of Ura that she can't read as she was raised here. When you get the last core to bring everything back, Zulf deciphers the journal. And then you come back and it appears that Zulf betrays you, almost destroys the Bastion and leaves. Turns out that Calmety was done by the government of Celedonia itself, and father of Zia was the main inventor, forced to create a deadly weapon to kill all Ura. He didn't have a choice because they threatened his daughter. He tries to stop the whole thing, scared of what he created and it affected the whole world. Bastion is actually an evacuation device in case anything goes wrong. And this is when the game takes a very subtle turn. Everything to this point that was shown about Saldonia was positive. Stable society full of warmth and friendliness. And now we are slowly beginning to see what it actually was. What we are supposed to rescue. It changes context of what we were doing. The kid goes further in the wilderness to find more so-called fragments that can repair the Bastion, which later gets attacked by people of Ura that Zulf informed. They have the last fragments so the kid follows them to their base and kills most of surviving Ura to save the whole world. We will stop here for now. With the start of Calamity and death of most people, something got revived. Nature. After first missions, you venture into the wilderness, that now untouched by people got a second chance. Jungles start to grow, forests are filled with animals that are growing in numbers to finally have a chance of proper existence. One of the things that allows them to survive are the fragments needed for Bastion. Fragments that you are looking for. So you are going into those places and destroy, kill everything. You are fighting those animals because they are simply trying to protect themselves. You are the aggressor here, however you are here to help, to recreate everything that has been destroyed. So you are killing them for a greater good, so you are the good guy. Narrator is constantly telling you that everything is worth it, that you are killing them to actually help them, because everything will turn back to times before the calamity, and everything will be happy again. He is repeating it every single mission as if he is trying to convince himself. But is it actually true? If you look at more details, you get to know the truth. Why those animals are attacking you? Because your people has been destroying everything those animals had for their whole lives. You are the enemy. The bad guy. Storing the country would make it the same as before, covering and hiding from the humans. And Ura, the people that you track to their base and kill everyone on the path, they did nothing wrong. If everything worked out as Saldonia wanted, they would all be dead. After trying to kill the whole country, are you really surprised that Zulf betrayed you? Scared of what might happen? What if Bastion is also a weapon? He cannot know it or actions of the Ura itself that are defending from your attacks. From the bits of the story you understand that they have been constantly oppressed and treated horribly by your countrymen. You killed them to save everyone, but are you really doing it for their own good? Every single weapon that you use belongs to a certain profession that work in the country of Saledonia. Hunting spears, revolvers, swords, flamethrowers, blunderbusses. This is not a peaceful and happy country, this is an imperialistic dictatorship. Saledonias were people of destruction and their last work only proved it, with calamity killing all it could touch. Using their weapons is only following their footstep, destroying everything on your way to reach your goal. And this is what saves the gameplay. It gives a really powerful context to the things you do. Killing and progressing is the narration itself, telling story of means satisfying the objective. Destroy things and get rewarded for destroying things, as gameplay and narration feature, as you think your destruction is righteous because it can save the world. And this is what makes the last act so powerful. You enter through the base of Ura, killing everyone that tried to stop you. Finally you get hold of Battering Ram, best weapon in the game. You become very slow, but you can kill everything with one hit and can easily destroy the whole environment. Hordes of people fall under your hits and you become an embodiment of destruction itself. And then you find Zulf, jumped by his own people. They believe that Zulf 
brought you to them. Seeing you, they began to flee and you have an option. Do you want to leave Zulf to death and move on? Or throw away the best weapon in the game and save him while being harmless? And this is something very unique. In video games, decision will always get you something. Developers don't want you to be unsatisfied with your decision, so you'll get some stuff even if you lose another. You never really have an option to restrain yourself from gameplay abilities to perform a certain decision affecting the story. Especially going from the moment of becoming the strongest you can be, to being completely harmless. I'm here Eyes open wide Feel your heart and it's glowing You cannot fight, you cannot run. Sacrifice of that sort is a statement of who you are when playing the game, but also the kid, where you follow the destruction that is embodied with the Caledonia or break the will. Forgive Zulf for the betrayal and sacrifice yourself. You were always destroying and now you can save someone. Before, it was never an option. What if you fail? What if everything you destroyed was for nothing because you had a change of heart at the last step? When you see Zulf that is lying half dead because of your action, do you think it is worth it? Do you feel guilt for everything that you have done and you want to repent? Through the sheer kind of sacrifice and good, you stop the violence. Even though you killed hundreds of them, they let you go after a while, seeing how you try to save a comrade. Maybe they are just tired, maybe they finally understand. Maybe you showed something different than what they think you are, more than just distraction. You don't really know. You immediately go back to Bastion and you have another decision. Do you want to restore the Saledonia or leave it? Travel and explore the world using Bastion's power and accept the calamity. First of all, Bastion is also a time travel machine. Everything goes back before the calamity, everyone loses their memory. Do you really believe that the apocalypse will not repeat itself? And what will really change? Narrator doesn't even know if he went back already. Do you still want to kill everything again, create a path of destruction for the second, tenth, one hundredth time? Also, are your people really worth saving? Caledonia won't change. We are talking about imperialistic xenophobes that will continue to destroy. Nature, civilizations, doesn't matter. They started this whole thing in the first place. Of course, not all of your countrymen are like that, but you cannot save everyone even though Rooks told you otherwise. The guild is starting to crack his shell the further you progress. He created the Bastion. He knew what was going to happen. He realizes the insanity that going back in time creates, but he cannot forgive himself. But you can help him. You can make the decision. You can accept the reality, accepting consequences and realizing the situation we are in. Some things cannot be changed, some lives cannot be saved. Everything must finally turn to dust and you need to accept it. But it doesn't mean that you don't have a chance to change things. Some are just outside your control. So, will you make a good decision? Here I figured you'd had enough of me by now. You could have undone the calamity itself, but instead you want to stay in a world like this. I gotta admit, kid, I ain't yet put much thought in that idea of carrying on with you here. We can't go back no more, but I suppose we could go wherever we please. Passion was something different because of that. Violence and destruction caused by a player is rarely perceived as something negative by the game. Even though the gameplay wasn't amazing, the context of it added a level of depth that made it more mesmerizing 
than most games with much better mechanics. This debut of Supergiant Games was something seriously impressive. To touch such teams as a first game is a ballsy move, and it paid off. There's also many things that make it unique even to this day, from art to soundtrack to story, that being simple and short has a lot of depth. I can only give my applause and seeing the next games, they never disappointed. It was a brave dream that through passion and work became reality. If you like this video, leave a like, give me this juicy juicy sub, comment your opinion, your experiences about the game or video, because it really matters to me, as I am just starting. See you soon and bye.